think we are, we are way below crop, uh, potential crop productivity and the major problem is although we have wonderful technology here available which has been generated through research the farmers do not have access to that knowledge and information. So that is why this event is so important. We can contact farmers and we have our own extension offices through our, through our company that we can go back and, and reach and teach those farmers uh, on how to improve their productivity. And uh, currently we are carrying out a very large program in terms of capacity building, especially for youth and women. And we have a target of reaching uh, uh, 20,000 uh, youth and women per year. Uh, we have a program called Genua program, which we have in partnership uh, with Mastercard Foundation and six other uh, local agencies uh, to be able to train uh, the youth and the women in all sectors of the economy, but majorly because in the counties the main economic activity is agricultural. The carol and the private sector, they have come together so that they can be able to bring uh, the technologies and the innovations that are there in Cairo to get to reach to the end user. So we are happy that uh, from yesterday and today we have hosted more than 3,500 and most of them we are young people and also the women. Yeah, of course, you know, we are saying that uh, uh, the youth, the younger people, people uh, they are the future of farming. So uh, this is this is just sending a message to young generation and young people to venture on farming. Let them not have that myth of saying that farming is the and agriculture is for the, the elderly people. Uh, let them not say that farming is a, a dirty work. So I encourage them to do farming and do it willingly. Uh, we are here today as the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> as you know that uh, uh, we have uh, several sectoral uh, committees. We are here uh, for, uh, with the Agriculture uh, Sector Committee to uh, witness and be part of the process of uh, modernizing agriculture uh, in our country. Uh, you know, as a responsibility and as a mandate for Kenya National Chamber of Commerce uh, is to provide networking, uh, capacity building and uh, enterprise expansion. I think we are, we are way below crop, uh, potential crop productivity and the major problem is although we have wonderful technology here available which has been generated through research the farmers do not have access to that knowledge and information so that is why this event is so important we can contact farmers and we have our own extension offices through our, through our company that we can go back and, and reach and teach those farmers uh, on how to improve their productivity. Food security remains a pressing global challenge with nearly half of the world's population facing food insecurity. In Kenya, where youth make up a significant portion of the population, their limited engagement in agriculture exacerbates the issue. However, Initiatives are underway to empower young farmers and revolutionize the industry. The Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, held its annual expo, providing a platform for farmers, educators and industry experts to converge and exchange ideas. Dr. Ruto Eric, the CEO of Kenya National Chambers of Commerce, while speaking as the guest of honor at the Calro Expo, outlined their mandate 
to empower agribusinesses and foster youth involvement in farming. And uh, currently we are carrying out a very large program in terms of capacity building, especially for youth and women. And we have a target of reaching uh, uh, 20,000 uh, youth and women per year. Uh, we have a program called Genua Program, which we have in partnership uh, with Mastercard Foundation and six other uh, local agencies uh, to be able to train uh, the youth and the women in all sectors of the economy, but majorly because in the counties the main economic activity is agricultural. The Caro and the private sector, they have come together so that they can be able to bring uh, the technologies and the innovations that are there in Caro to get to reach to the end user. So we are happy that uh, from yesterday and today we have hosted more than 3,500 and most of them are young people and also the women. The turnout of youth and women at the Expo was overwhelming, signaling a growing interest in agriculture among the younger generation. I must say that uh, the organizers of this uh, Expo we were very deliberate to ensure that uh, women and youth are brought on board and that we will be able to encourage them to come and learn the new technologies whereby they have responded very positively. Uh, yesterday and today we have more than 3,500 uh, uh, visitors who have visited and a good percentage involves both women and youth. You can see we have the cabbages here that are growing and you, and you can see they are big and uh, in fact bigger than even what you get in the market. See, you? Mr. Moraya, a teacher, speaks about the educational value of the Expo. It is very significant that uh, the learners should learn how, uh, learners should learn that agriculture is, uh, it is a profession, if I may say so, where someone can even learn or rather start earning right from when you are at school. Uh, growing of crops, you don't need to have a, a very big farm. There is what we are calling uh, innovative gardening. Gardening. Those skills can help us in, uh, in, uh, or rather, to increase the food and the crop production in our in our in our country. He further notes that the expo provided his pupils with a hands-on learning experience bridging the gap between theory and practice. We have uh, moved from classroom teaching to where things are happening. We have come to observe or rather to learn from the field how crops are grown, how different uh, management practices are done in agriculture. This one, this one, those are six blades which rotates at a very at a very high speed. Exhibitors showcased modern technologies and best practices in horticulture, highlighting the potential for profitable returns in smallholder farming. I am studying now uh, on a watermelon plot. This is a, a variety called Almasi, Almasi F1. And you, as you can see, they are giving a, an oblong type of uh, watermelon which actually is weighing from 8 to 13 kgs. Uh, watermelon is a, is, a, is a kind of plant which can, a crop which can give you a very, very good uh, uh, output on it and it can just live to your life. For example, in this small plot of mine, I have planted 10, 10 pieces. Uh, that is 10 plants. And as you can, you can see, every plant has given me from five to, uh, from three to five plants. So each, uh, for example, if you are doing it in an acreage, that basically is going to give you uh, around 40 tons per, per, per acre. For non carrot variety, you don't do what you call transplanting. You plant directly in the, in the prepared seed bed. Once you have prepared, uh, well prepared seed bed, then you plant di directly under the, the, the drills. And it drills from one drill to another drill. You are supposed to prepare to be one, uh, one and a, uh, ten centimeter from drill to a drill. And you plant it as a drill. Then you cover it lightly. Once you have done that, you water it. Once you are applying water, then after one week, the seeds will have germinated. After germination, then you stay for another two to three weeks 
you start the cone paste and disease control. And that is also whereby you are supposed to apply foliar feed, whereby it makes up to this extent. For a small, for a small holder of a farmer, these are the best seed because it can't can let you down because once you establish land preparation and everything, all will be okay. The germination percentage is very high and you'll reap it. Uh, my name is Bonfis Mwangi. On this portion, we have a variety of spinach called Ford Hook Giant from Grifferton. And the, the spinach variety takes 60 days to mature. On the seedlings, it takes uh, two to three weeks on the nursery. So after two to three weeks, you transplant your seedlings. Um, you can put uh, on a whole two to three seedlings, but you space around half meter interval and then you, to prevent loss of the moisture on the soil, you do mulching and that will also enhance the proper absorption of moisture by the seedlings. After transplant, that is two weeks, then you can apply fertilizer to enable fol foliar and CN to enable growth and, wid and widening of the leaves. The variety is also high productivity and for a small farmer the yield is very high for a small plot. Yes. So apart from spinach we also have cucumber. As you can see this variety is called supermarketer from Grifferton. The germination of cucumber seeds takes 45 days and you plant direct on an interval of one meter approximately. From two, one to two weeks after it has germinated, you can start your fertilizer application and pest control. Okay. Our cucumber supermarketer is very profitable. Per plant, it can germinate up to 10 to 15 plants, cucumber fruits. It is also very highly yielding. And on a general one acre, it can produce around 35 to 45 tons. The plant is very profitable, either small-scale farming or large-scale farming, especially for the young people with no availability of large lands. A small section of land can also turn to be a big profit with this cucumber. Attending the expo has equipped me with the knowledge and tools to improve my farming practices. Fred G, a government retiree who has found a new passion in farming, explains. Well, I would say I'm a smallholder farmer. Uh, I've just started because I just retired from my normal official work. And now I want to be a smallholder, uh, doing tea and also doing bananas. And now I want to try also hash. Fred G is also happy that through the expo, he has managed to purchase a product that will help him farm better. I must say I have met one good product they, they, through a company called World Grow. Uh, they have convinced me that uh, if I use it in my, my tea farm, uh, which is in Kangari, I can get a better production. They also have convinced me that if I do it on my banana trees in Maragua, uh, they can also do very well. Water grow is organic soil conditioner with all micro elements that are not found in chemical fertilizers. So it is a complement product that gives a plant a balanced nutrition. So what we do, we advise the farmers to use water grow to get rid of low produce because low produce is a challenge with many farmers. We specialize in extension service delivery, okay? So we have to make sure that when uh, farmers come to learn about our product, we have to teach them how to use the product most effectively so they can increase their crop productivity. And so um, this is a great opportunity here to close the gap.
Despite these initiatives, challenges such as limited access to land and credit, rural urban migration and lack of awareness persist, hindering youth involvement in agriculture. Well, I think uh, in general that youth regard agriculture as a punishment, okay? And, um, you know, so they think that it's got no opportunity to generate the income to meet their needs. And so, um, you know, I think we have to, we have, we, we must show them good agronomic practices. Uh, we appreciate that uh, our youth and even our women, they may say that they don't have a piece of land. But what we are telling them is that uh, even when you don't have the piece of land, you can lease. And the most important is that even that you don't have to have acres of piece of land. With the new technologies that are being produced here in Cairo, you can have a small piece of land and which you uh, have with high produce. So I want to encourage them that uh, they embrace agribusiness agri by applying or using the certified seed, whereby they are guaranteed of high yield. To bridge the gap, we must address these challenges and provide support systems for aspiring farmers. The Cal Rodhika Expo serves as a beacon of hope for stirring youth involvement in farming and paving the way for a more food secure future. Yeah, of course, you know, we are saying that uh, uh, the youth, the younger people, people uh, they are the future of farming. So uh, this is this is just sending a message to young generation and young people to venture on farming. Let them not have that myth of saying that farming is the and agriculture is for the, the elderly people. Uh, let them not say that farming is a, a dirty work. So I encourage them to do farming and do it willingly. Well, I would like to tell Kenyans that farming should be actually an active uh, activity in the country. Uh, it one, it's one of the, the activities that can engage more Kenyans and also uh, make them make income, particularly when you start thinking about exporting our products, which we only need to increase productivity. And once we increase product production like tea, uh, we should be able to even make our Kenya shillings to be better when you compare it with other uh, foreign exchange currencies. Uh, we've seen fantastic uh, research that has been done here, technology that has been done here. You know, as a country, uh, uh, there is a, a serious uh, shortage, especially of food in terms of food security. We are currently importing, I think, 40% of the uh, uh, food, that is, food and food products that we require as a country. Uh, we also are cognizant that we are also losing another 40% due to post-harvest uh, uh, losses. And uh, here we've seen how we can be able to increase their uh, productivity uh, by area size. And uh, we're very happy in terms of the, the research that is going on here, uh, the quality seeds that are being produced uh, for our farmers. And uh, this one will go a long way in terms of us being able to satisfy uh, the local market.